On May 8, 1996, Fredericksburg celebrated its 150th anniversary and the enduring friendship between the Comanche Nation and the people of Gillespie County. A remarkable treaty between a former German baron and the Penateka Comanche tribe was negotiated here on the banks of the San Saba River in the hill country north of Fredericksburg. The city still honors the Comanches who helped create and preserve this relationship and their descendants who have continued the friendship. Chiefs Old Owl, Santana, Katempsey, Buffalo Hump, and Horseback were especially influential, having been present at the San Saba River Peace Treaty Summit and at the Fredericksburg Treaty Signing with John O. Musebach, Fredericksburg's founder. German immigrants had come to the Republic of Texas fleeing overpopulation and political strife. Unfortunately, the Society for the Protection of German Immigrants had purchased land and fallen victim to a disreputable businessman, Henry Francis Fisher, who knew these Texas lands were inhabited by the Comanche people. The first attempt to populate the Fisher-Miller land grant stalled. Surveyors refused to enter a place infested by the much-feared Penateka Comanches. 4,000 new immigrants were on the way to the colony, and the leader, Baron Ottfried Hans von Musbach, knew he had to do something. Musbach put aside his title of nobility and rode to New Braunfels. There, Musbach learned that in addition to the society's bad finances and the Comanche problem, according to the original contract with the Republic of Texas, the land grant was subject to forfeit if it wasn't settled by August 1847. Musbach founded Fredericksburg, but he still had to find peace with the Comanches in order to open the surrounding lands before the new settlers arrived. In January, Musbach rode out with a company of men heading for the heart of the Comancheria. Included in the company was interpreter Lorenzo de Rojas, who had been kidnapped by the Comanches as a child. In February, Musbach's expedition was met by a Comanche party carrying a white flag. The groups shared a meal, and the Comanches led Musbach and his men to their main camp on the San Saba. The entire camp, including women and children, rode out to greet the Germans. At the urging of his interpreter, Musbach ordered all forty of his men to raise their rifles and discharge, disarming themselves as the Comanches neared. This was a sign of trust. While Musbach waited for the Comanche chiefs to assemble, he walked among them unarmed. The habit earned the German respect. The Comanche honored him with the name El Sol Colorado, the Red Sun, because of his flowing red beard. During the negotiations, Musbach's lack of prejudice toward the Indians was important. I do not disdain my red brethren because their skin is darker, and I do not think more of the white people because their complexion is lighter, he said. Musbach also stressed that his people weren't Texan or Mexican not the Comanche's enemies. Unlike most Indian treaties, which were tricky, unfair, and favored the white settlers, this treaty provided an equal balance. The Comanches agreed to share their hunting grounds and grant the German settlers and surveyors free access to the land between the Llano and the San Saba rivers in exchange for $3,000 in presents and supplies. The Germans granted the Comanches free access to their settlements as well. The Germans loaded their wagons and began the return trip to the settlements. They were joined by a large band of Comanches, including women and children, under the leadership of Santa Anna. After crossing the Llano River on March 5th, the Germans and Comanches shared a camp near Enchanted Rock and reached Fredericksburg the next afternoon. The company's arrival fell on a Sunday, and Musbach was greeted by a festive crowd dressed in their colorful best. The treaty eventually opened up four million acres for settlement. The agreement was the sole treaty negotiated privately between the Comanche and settlers and the only pact between whites and Native Americans that was never broken.